ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ This is the Sikh History Series podcast episode 2 The Crossing of the Sarsa River At the embankments of the river Sarsa in the dark freezing cold morning Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj sets up a divan and then recites and sings Riyasa Divar His elderly mother the wives his younger children as well as many of the Gur Sikhs sit and listen to the Nitnam and the Kirtan while Baba Jeevan Singh and other Khalsa warriors are off fighting the 800,000 strong army of the enemy keeping them at bay Bhai Uday Singh Ji has already been shaheed in the battle of Shahid Tibbi keeping the Dusht forces at bay and displaying such bravery Bhai Jeevan Singh Ji is fighting on now chopping down the enemy forces of evil while protecting the Khalsa Vahid Once the divan is over the Gursik start to cross over the river Sarsa the forces pressing close on one side they cross into the fiercely cold fast running rough water rapids of the river Sarsa Baba Jeevan Singh Ji is fighting on the river banks and is shaheed while fighting off these Mughal forces fierce, fearlessly he is chopping them down not turning away he is fighting stepping forward in battle and he attains shahidi as per the guru's hukum he is shaheed fighting till his last breath the guru six are crossing the river sarsa and as they are crossing into these rapids this fast running water many seeks a shaheed drowning in the rough rapid water horses weapons and much of guru sahib's treasury including the hasa grants and his writings are lost in these rough water rapids many sinks are shaheed in this river and many are shaheed fighting the mughal forces on the embankments of the river members of the sangat are washed away and drowned after the sarsa river crossing guru gobind singh ji is left with a small jatha of warriors which include the panch pyare by Kota Singh by Madan Singh and other Khalsa warriors Guru Sahib losing so much in the river still radiates with supreme charity kala being beyond the material world the guru's spirit is unbreakable Mata Gujri ji and the two shorter sahibzade are separated from the rest of the Khalsa and the great guru and it happened during this river crossing At this place on the river Sarsa now stands a Gurdwara Sahib called Parvar Vishora Sahib marking the point where the family of the Guru and the Khalsa were all split up in this river crossing and during the building of this Gurdwara Sahib many years later many shastras were found and many bones and skeletons were recovered as they dug here many people were shaheed here It was a very tough time. Mata Saheb Deva Ji and Mata Sundari were also separated from the Guru in this river crossing. On the other side of the river they are joined by Pai Mani Singh Ji who accompanies them and takes them to Ropar where they stop for one night and then takes them on towards Delhi. On the other side of the river Mata Gujri Ji and the Shorte Saheb Jade are separated from the Guru also and the rest of the Khalsa. and they are led by Gangu Brahman towards his home the crossing of the river has split up the guru's family the forge and the sangat many are separated and lost others are shaheed this is a very chaotic and sad time the guru is left with a small jatha of sings on the other side of the river sarsa they ride on here a jatha of the singhs are set upon and attacked by the rangars the rangars were firm dost enemies of the guru and the khalsa panth the rangars were converts from the hindu dharm to islam and they were extremist fanatical zealots and they fired a huge volley of bullets and arrows upon the singhs the singhs fired back and the rangars fired back and they hit bhai bajitra singh ji twice in the torso 
These are deep wounds and there's profuse blood loss from the body of this warrior. Bhai Bajitar Singh. Saibzada Ajit Singh Ji sees this and he comes back and takes Baba Bajitar Singh Ji on his horse and gallops away, saving him. The, the other Singhs, the Jathav Singhs, return fire, killing many Rangars and keeping them at bay, forcing them to retreat and then they ride on, the Singhs ride on to catch up with the rest of the Khalsa and the Guru. And the Guru was stopped at Kotla Nihan Khan for a short break. And this is the home of a Bhutan by the name of Nihang Khan. Now he had great love and affection for the Guru and he used to visit Sri Anandpur Sahib often. He'd come here to sell horses to the Guru and do Sangat and Seva. He was a Pyara of the Guru. And here he requests the Guru that if the Guru so wished, he could stand and fight the oncoming forces from his home. Guru Sahib, being a master tactician and so compassionate, thanked him for all the pyar. But this home was no place to fortify and fight from, nor did the Guru wish to bring his family, the family of Nihankan, into harm's way. Guruji explains the art of war and fortification under the current circumstances would not be wise, and that they would not be stopping here but would be moving on very quickly. But Guruji requests one thing. They look after the heavily bleeding and wounded warrior, Bhai Bajitar Singh Ji, who is not in a condition to go on. They agree. Bhai Bajitar Singh Ji stays here. For two days and two nights, Bhai Bajitar Singh Ji stayed here, heavily wounded and on death's door. The pursuing forces of Vizir Khan and the hill chiefs arrive here. They searched the home of Nihan Khan. As they were about to enter the room where Bhai Bajitar Singh was, Nihan Khan called out and he said not to enter that room as his daughter and his son-in-law are asleep in that room. Then those conducting the search, respecting the Bhutan Nihan Khan and his family, did not enter that room. The daughter of Nihan Khan, Bibi Mumtaj, who heard this, later said to her father, since those words left your lips, this Singh warrior is my husband. If he lives or if he dies, I can now never and will never marry anyone else. I will live by your words. On that night, the third night, Bhai Bajitar Singh Ji breathes his last breath and passes away in the early hours of the morning. And around this time, Gursa Singh and Vagga Singh, two Khalsa warriors, come searching for the Guru a few days later. Around the time of Bhai Bajitra Singh Ji's death, they arrive at the Kotla of Nihang Khan. Nihang Khan informs them the great Guru passed through here a few days ago. However, one Singh is left here and he only passed away this morning. And they tell the Singhs to now perform the funeral rites as per the Khalsa Panth tradition. The two Singhs performed the Antam Sanskar and cremation of Bhai Bajitar Singh Ji that night. Guru Sahib and his Jathav Singhs start to head south. With Guru Sahib at the time are two of his nephews, Baba Gulab Singh and Baba Sham Singh. These are the grandchildren of Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Tayaji, Baba Surajmal, meaning they are the great-grandchildren of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji Maharaj. Guru Gobind Singh Ji sends them to Girvi Pend to Raja Nan to go and to stay there. Then the Guru continues south with a jatha of roughly 40 warrior Singhs. Guru Sahib travels on, stopping at Pool Majra Pend for a short time. Here from a deep well, Singhs fetch water for the Guru to wash their hands and have Panjishnan. Washing their face, Guruji takes some fresh clean water to drink. All the Singhs present take a moment to drink some water and refresh themselves, starving and cold, exhausted after the bloody battles and the crossing of the raging rapids in the river Sarsa, they take a moment. 
They then continue on their journey, on their path. They come across a man traveling to Delhi, traveling from Delhi. The man was a Mughal who was traveling from Delhi towards Sri Anandpur Sahib. The Singh spotting him, pull him up and question him, Who are you? And where are you going? They grip him and hold him. He informs the Singh he is an employee of the Mughal forces and he is travelling to Anantpur Sahib to inform the Mughal forces there that the huge army has arrived and will be reaching them very shortly. He tells the Singhs and the Guru this army is huge. It is an army of Das Lak, one million. And it has set off with the sole purpose of capturing Guru Gobind Singh. I am travelling ahead to let them know the force is coming so they can make preparations to receive them. It's a huge force I tell you, spreading across the land. An ocean of men further than the human eye can physically see. There are countless battle standards bearing various emblems to signify the various regiments from across different lands and countries that are present in this force. There are countless war drums beating and battle horns sounding. It's like a giant tsunami wave of water submerging the land as they travel. They shake the very ground upon which you walk. This is the largest army ever assembled, says the Mughal messenger. The Guru now is being pursued by an 800,000 roughly strong force from Anandpur Sahib. And now, a one million strong force, which is marching up towards them also. Maharaj looks at his force of 40 warriors and tells them, these huge forces are coming and they want to fight with us. They want to fight us and face us in battle. Looking at his things with great jar, with great enthusiasm, he tells them, that we should give them what they have come for. If they have come for a fight, we shall give them a fight. They have travelled from so far, all across the world to fight us. We should not disappoint them. If we evade them, they will always talk about the time when they came to fight the Guru, but he fled hearing of us. The Guru was unable to grant us the wish of a battle, a war, Guru Sahib now informs the Khalsa, the Jatha of 40 Singhs, we shall stand our ground. We shall grant them their wishes. We will now find a fort of some sort and wait for them. We will face them. We will fight them. Guru Sahib is so excited for this battle, so enthusiastic to wage war against these evil tyrants. Guruji tells the Singhs there is a fort in village Chamkur Sahib. It's a small fort on top of a hill. All the rest of the surrounding area is flat. And this is the only fort like building in this whole local area. We shall take this fort and fight from there. From there, we will destroy the soul of the enemy. And from there, we shall chop them down in battle. There, they will see how brave and skillful we are. We shall show them our courage and our martial spirit and we shall test their mettle. We shall not run from the fight, from the battle. We are fighting those who have no dharam, no iman, those with no faith and no honor, those who have swum oaths on their faith and broken them time and time again. We will totally uproot their kingdoms and empire, says Guruji, as they pluck up some weeds from the ground with their deer arrow. Guruji, being a superior tactician and a master of the art of war, knew about the fort of Jamkur as they had been in this area once before, and a general never forgets, and being the general of generals, a true general, they keep note of everything, the fort, the train of the land. Such was the warrior-minded Sadhguru. And now, the Guru, 
along with the Khalsa right towards Chamkohar. This brings us to the end of this episode and in the next episode we shall hear about the Guru arriving in the village and acquiring the fort of Chamkohar. As always, Pul Chuk Maaf Karna Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh